Good morning, everybody. Bob Allen here for another segment of Good Morning Oxnard. And today we're privileged to have a returning visitor, Jeff Geisick, okay, who has been on the show a couple of times before. So for some of our new viewers, Jeff, why don't you bring everybody up to date on what you've been doing, okay, and then we'll get into something real special that you've done. Yeah, where I'm at now, I, I, I think that's a good approach. By the way, everybody, hello, uh, my name is Jeff Geisick. I'm now working as a writer. Um, prior to working as a writer, I spent almost 30 years in a career working as a financial consultant. So I worked um, in the real estate field, both helping people purchase as well as sell, lease, or even invest in real estate. Um, then I went into the brokerage business where I bought and sold stocks and helped people set up accounts for retirement and uh, for investment. Um, then I went into the insurance field where I then help people get life insurance, health insurance, long-term care insurance, even the California Partnership for Long-Term Care. So in the end, I had 10 licenses that I used for the purposes of helping my customers, you know, the, for their benefit. A busy and person. Each person had a different need. So by providing all of these services, I was able to interject as needed into their lives, my help, my advice, uh, my solutions. And uh, I'd like to think for the most part that I was successful. I know that I wasn't perfect, but I had a good run. And uh, I regret not being able to continue. Um, the business was really complicated. And I had to turn over hundreds of accounts. Well, what made you uh, have to, uh, or was it a passion oh, to you. want to try and uh, do something else? Well, it, although I'd already begun writing a little bit, it wasn't so much that I wanted to do this. It's because m my health um, and my situation, uh, my life, it had changed. And mm -hmm. it doesn't appear, I'm sure, on camera that there's anything wrong with me. And I'm not here to, yeah, no, share with you know, I, I, I don't want to complain, that, but it, it is what it is. Yes. So uh, it would shock people, I'm sure, to find out that as I sit here, I suffer from multiple sclerosis. And there is a lucky to that in that the version that I st to suffer from now is called relapsing, remitting mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis. And that simply means that it's the first stage of the disease. It still hasn't progressed beyond that. And it uh, hit me pretty hard when it first happened. I was paralyzed um, completely down my right side where my right arm wouldn't lift and I couldn't walk properly. And my, um, my facial muscles, and I still have trouble talking. It had to be scary. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly yeah. at the time, and that's what the doctors thought, thought I had a stroke. And they had reason for that because I had already survived two heart attacks um, in addition to other medical issues. So um, they initially diagnosed for that and they were wrong. It was multiple sclerosis. So you had, uh, seeing all of this in front of you, you had this passion to be a writer. And is well, that what made you, uh, the combination, uh, sort of leave the financial world? Well, again, it, it was the door that opened Got you. or reopened as it were mm -hmm. when this happened and it wasn't just the multiple sclerosis which I know it sounds strange you'd think that'd be manageable but I had yet other health problems I had a third heart attack and uh, the net result of the third heart attack was is that I had a large aneurysm appear in my brain Wow! and Instead of something that's normally delivering blood around my brain, brain the size of a human hair, it was now the size of the tip of my pinky. So you've experienced things that people can't even, probably who are watching this, even conceive of. I, okay? I, I have to be honest with you. I, I don't know why I'm doing this interview with, be, with you because it's either lucky or a miracle. It's just a blessing well, maybe that I'm still awesome. able to... 
let me to, take to it be way. on this earth. That's that's just how I look at it right now. But let me take it another way. Yeah, if I was to show people that have some disabilities, mm -hmm. okay, that you could do one or two things. You could say, okay, yeah. I have it, and let me do something. So now that you're doing something, mm -hmm. let's get into that passion of what you went to. No, I, I, you, you I think you decided to be a writer. Yeah. Okay. But you had a vision of something. Well. I, I, you, you use the word vision, um, maybe I got lucky, but ironically I picked a subject which is now in, in the forefront of America with regard to our position. We're at war, which is unfortunate, uh, but it's a reality. And um, my character is a spy who works for the United States government, but he does it as a spy would in that... I use my background working from the financial field and then also my love of fishing, which I'd done all around the world, and use that as my character's background for being able to come and go as he mm. pleased and not have the apparent ties as a spy. Um, I used my first of this series, first of four novels, I used Crush Hour oh. as my vehicle and this is the first one that I just produced. I used Crush Hour to um, to introduce my character and my character's characters. Because okay. there's a list of characters that are part of, of my crew and people come and go in my, in my cast, as it were. Um, I'm writing four novels, um, or, I'm, or I have written, depending on how you, how you phrase it. Uh, my second one is called Man Down, and Man Down has been written. I'm now in the edit stage, um, and I had to make sure I got this done first so that I could enhance my timeline and make sure that I wasn't contradicting myself from book to book on something that I'm sure one of my readers might might call me out on. Say, hey, how come such and such happened, but you didn't account for this or whatever? Well, I want to make sure that everything makes sense. And my first novel has a lot of twists and turns. It's not going to go where the readers expect. It really well, doesn't. You, you know, and you shared something that you were thinking of as you were writing it and all the things that have happened. Give us a little background in some of the characters oh, so that our audience can understand that little... Well, I, I, I don't know if they're... They, I don't know if they're going to like my character. My character is a, a, a bit of a, a wisecracker. And... Uh, I think he's he's he works as a smart character. I think people appreciate intelligence. Um, it's hard for me to dumb down this particular character only because I'm writing him to be smart and uh, to be very well versed in whatever it is he needs to do to do what he needs to do. Um, also, I've had a f the luck of having a few inventions in my lifetime, and what I tried to do was use my inventions in this book also as assets for my character much like uh, Q would for uh, the various Bond movies mm. uh, you know yeah. although I'm not a character so to speak in the book um, the impetus is that my character uses his inventions to help himself and uh, and help the rest of the world as it were and depending on what the situation was so when did you, uh, when was Crush Hour, the first book, uh, when was it printed and uh, come out? We started, I started on it 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. So 2006, when I first started writing it. Um, the last version actually was written this year, even though we show a published date of November of last year. Okay. Um, and now it's available at uh, Amazon.com. Okay. I've published through Ingram Spark, which is a um, a good platform to help a new writer get started at, mm -hmm. or even someone who's experienced, because it's all dependent on your need, what you what you ask them to do for you. Yeah. And uh, I had to take the time to do the final edit, but I had uh, a good editor. I had Lee Barnathan, who works in the Valley as an editor, done a lot of work. Um, actually worked at um, uh, one of the local campuses uh, for the college um, uh, last I spoke to him and uh, he's um, credited in here as as my editor also 
I used my own assets and resources and one of my oldest friends to help me put the cover together and put the actual file together that we sent to the publisher. Her name's Helene Freeman and unless you're really, really familiar with her work, it, you'd be hard pressed to find out that she was the creator of the cover for the cover for Straight Outta Compton, the album. Oh, okay from way back when. Wow. And also, she's the creator of the artwork around the California Raisins and okay. has got credit for it. So she's done a great job of creating the cover and actually using my hand, my arm, my suit, and my old watch to uh, give the look of my hand being trapped or caught in Crush Hour. Wow. Well, it's a neat thing, and uh, I want to thank you so much for coming and sharing all of this, you know, with our audience, okay? Uh, I think that as we talk, this is not going to be the last time we're going to do a segment of Good Morning Oxnard. I hope that uh, as y you are progressing even in things that could be important for the community, we certainly want to invite you back here to the studio. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Um, and so I, you know, I couldn't do without you, Bob. I really uh, appreciate it's the opportunity. Doing it, it's doing it together. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, let's do it.